so the Titans will get the football to begin. Titans have got to you know, ride with what's taken them so far. This run game has got to get going. Touchdown, Titans! Derrick Henry to Peter for the 15th time this year. And the play action has to be smooth off of it. Davis has got it at the 30. Puts on a move to the 15. Another move to the 5. <laughs> and move oh, to the end okay. zone. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Intercepted, fired. Tennessee, 46. Detroit, 25. As the Titans get it done again. Tighten up! From the Bet MGM studio, I'm Mike Keith with the Titans head coach, and we welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. The Tennessee Titans are 10 and 4. 48 hours ago, the Titans knocked off the Detroit Lions 46 to 25. We bring in the head coach, and as you put Sunday's victory into the rearview mirror, going over things with your players, what did you talk to them about from that win? About a lot of the things that we did well and about a lot of the things that we have to continue to improve on. And, you know, we had a little lull there in the, in the second quarter. You know, we were able to get a turnover, but they turned that into a safety and then another touchdown. And so that nine points without us touching the football was a little frustrating. I think we have to do a better job of, of not having those lulls during the game to try to continue to, to stay consistent throughout. And uh, that's what we're striving for going to take a look at six plays from the win over Detroit and we're going to actually start in the second quarter Titans leading 14 to 7 second and three at the 17 yard line of the Detroit Lions and Ryan Tannehill showing his wheels yep caught a little boot here they covered it you know really well their man covered but you know that also means we got a chance to run and you can see Corey there working for a little block there legally and allows Ryan to, to get in there would rather not have had him stretch that ball across, but, you know, he took care of it, and, and we trust Ryan with the football, and he made a heck of a play. All right, so the Titans went into halftime ahead 24-15. to 15. At the end of three, it's 24-18. to 18. It's anybody's ball game. Titans on the first play of the fourth quarter have third and one at the 36 of the Lions, and here comes the King. Well, that was a great cut. You know, those guys all got him covered up inside, and, you know, I thought Derek made a really nice cut, got back to vertical. You can see him get back inside the corner there. The corner thinks he's going to bounce it out. And you know, Derek stays tight, and uh, he's able to get it down there and, you know, allow us to, uh, to score a touchdown. Questionable spot there, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. Titans, nonetheless, get it in the end zone, get a two-point conversion. They go up 32-18. to 18. Then the defense does a great job. Gets a three and out, or are they going to have to make it a four and out as the punt team decides to go? Well, we got to be better on the edge over there. You know, we got a couple of guys over there that, that have to be better. You know, I mean, we're all talking fake, 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 and, you know, it just, just needs to be better. And that, that's, that's frustrating, but, but Nick does a great job, and that's a wide receiver that's coming over there and tackling him. He showed up on special teams, and, you know, he's been noticed. And uh, he's going to get more opportunities. And you know, that, that's the way that you, you help the football team. You're back up at one position and you an impact special teams player on another. Rookie from Indiana, Nick Westbrook Aquina with the tackle. Titans get the ball at the 34 of the Lions and eventually will take it in. A screen pass to Darrington Evans sets it up. Yeah, this was nice to see. You know, we got blockers out in front and Darrington is able to get down the sidelines and most of all, you know, I liked how he didn't run out of bounds. And, uh, you know, that was good to see. Um, you know, we hadn't hit one of these screens in a while, and the ball got tipped. He stuck with it and uh, secured the catch. You saw Nate down there getting an extra block, and 
you know, right here, Darrington doesn't run out of bounds. He spins and gets about an extra five yards. Third down and goal at the two after the Evans catch. The Titans have to go to the air for the touchdown, and it's A.J. Brown. Yeah, we just, you know, we're able to progress through here. The, the offensive line gives us enough time. You can see Ryan progressing through, and, you know, A.J. is tough to handle right there when he gets the ball. And, you know, apparently, he launches this one pretty good. That's pretty funny to watch our fans go and, and get that football, but as a heck of a pass, maybe we'll use him on the Hail Marys. Go to the concession stand to get the football, actually. I don't know that I've ever seen that. So our final play of the six-pack comes with a minute 38 left in regulation. The Titans comfortably in front, 46-25, to 25, and here's Kevin Byard. Yeah, it was good that we could finish the game off there and, you know, not leak any uh, – you know, extra points and on on the scoreboard. And I think that that's important. And uh, and Kevin comes over there. We got a little pressure, forced the quarterback to to lob one up there, and we we're able to make a play there to, to end the game. Byard's 18th career interception comes off Chase Daniel and wraps up a 21-point victory for the Titans. Later in this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola, we'll have the Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. Hint: It's another defensive back. But up next on the program, it's the Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game. It's one of the touchdowns you didn't see in the six-pack. It's a good one. Stay tuned. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola from the Bet MGM studio. Glad you're with us talking about the 10 and 4 Tennessee Titans and now talking about the Bridgestone clutch performance play of the game. Mike Vrabel, it's seven all at the point where you get the ball back to start your second possession and that possession doesn't last very long. No, and this is a good one. You know, you, you highlight the pocket, which, which you know that I love that firm inside pocket allows the quarterback to step up. Corey runs a great route. Post safety's diving down in there, and he cuts across his face and breaks back out. Ryan gives him a great football. Corey protects it. Uh, you can see the play fake there. You can see the clean pocket. Um, you know, just great execution. You know, and Corey's continuing to build confidence and, you know, proud of the way that he ran after the catch there and, and was able to score a huge play. Longest play of Corey Davis's career, part of a four-catch, 110-yard performance for him impact of that is so big because Detroit had just driven 14 plays, 75 yards to tie the game, and you immediately in 10 seconds flip it right back around. All the work they've done essentially went out the window. We couldn't get off the field on third down, which leads to long drives, and you know we'll, we'll have to try to continue to, to figure that out. And uh, but, but the offense came back and, and, and hit a play for us, so you know, that, that helped with the momentum. It's time now for our Delta Dental segment. Can you guess this Titan? Coach no. Mike Vrabel, can oh. you guess that Titan? And I know. No? As in N-O or I know? N-O. Let's take the break. When we come back, we'll finish up with Delta Dental and can Mike Vrabel guess the Titan? Also, our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. A returnee. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca Cola. Mike Vrabel's favorite part of his week Delta Dentals, Guess the Titan feature, where we show a picture of a current Titans player when he was generally in the crib. And Coach Vrabel has to figure out who it is, much to his chagrin. Coach Vrabel, as we look at this picture, who is this Titan? I, you know, I just, I'm looking close there. It looks like he's kind of holding a phone up to his ear. Could that be Will Compton? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, you know, I could tell by the way he was holding that phone up like he was working that working the phone. Will Compton has done a fantastic job for you on special teams. And on Sunday, did a great job on goal line defense. It's tough to get him stopped down there. We, we have done a good job, but you know, we've given up too many touchdowns on third down down there and fourth down. But you know, we've had some really cool goal line stops, some, some tackles down there. And 
know, that continues to to help us. Daquan did a great job. Rick Shaw was there, and then Will Will topped it off and got that football out. Time for our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, and this week. It's Adoree Jackson, who returned for a regular season game for the Titans for the first time since December 1st, 2019. On Sunday, Mike, Adoree gave you 27 overall snaps, and, man, it was good to see 25 back out there. Yeah, you know, we got to get everybody back that we, we can. You know, everybody that's available needs to come back and, and try to help us down this stretch. You know, for us, the, the playoffs have started, and, uh, and we're going to have a huge test this week. But, but we're going to need everybody that we can in the door. It was good to get him in there. It was good to get him some snaps, and, and hopefully he can build on that. Haven't heard from him in a while, so let's have a visit with Amy Wells and our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, Adoree Jackson. All right, Adoree, for starters, how did it feel to be back on the football field? I was texting my mom. She actually called me when I was warming up, which was crazy. I usually don't pick up my phone, but I didn't tell nobody I was playing, so nobody knew. And so my mom called me like in the middle of warm-ups before, you know, the whole team goes out there. And I was just talking to her. She's like, I'm just mad you can tell me. But, you know, I know it's your decision. I just hope that, you know, the God always did. She said, I don't hope, but I know God is going to be with you and you're going to be all right. Now, you said you felt a little bit anxious. Was it the idea of being back on the field? Was it nerves about making plays? What was it that was making you feel some of those feelings that you might not have felt in a while? I think it's been 13 weeks and just the thoughts all going through my head. You know, you want to play good. You don't want to do nothing, you know, to hinder or hurt the team. And then at the end of the day, I just had to stop. You know, you got to stop thinking negative, think positive. Now, it must have helped a little bit that the Titans were playing very well as a whole. Being a part of a game like this, does it feel like when the game is going well, it's easier to build a little bit of confidence? Yeah, I think I had to like hit somebody and finally get into the groove of everything. I know my first couple of plays, you know, everybody kept, how you feel out there? When I was running off on the sideline, I'm like, man, I don't know. It feel, it feel cool, but it don't feel like, you know, I'm actually playing. And then eventually, it just felt like I was in the game and everything just went back to normal. What did you do to stay engaged when you knew, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you were not going to be on the field on Sundays? I just watched film, watched the practice film, whatever it may be, getting up up to date with the verbiage or the new calls that were going on out there. And really just watching, the, when I was at home watching the game, the TV copy, just imagine myself in a position and just trying to get myself mentally better. How proud are you of what your teammates have been able to accomplish in this 2020 season? You know, from the inside, looking in, uh, you get to see everything that they've been through, the ups and the downs, the, the banging, the grinding. And you know, a lot of people don't understand that or they take it for granted or they just see us go out there on Sundays, but they don't see the nuances of everything that we do, you know, try to get to Sunday or try to get these wins. And that's all we think about just stacking each win. It's just excited to see those guys competing and challenging each other to get better. And that's what we were trying to do every week. Adoree Jackson, thank you for being our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. Now the Titans have 10 wins and 10 wins means the season's going pretty well. The future's bright for this Titans team, but it's about to get a little bit brighter. We'll explain when we come back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola from the Bet MGM studio. Pleased to be joined now by Gil Beverly, Titan Senior Vice President, Chief Marketing and Revenue Officer. Some exciting news with an announcement that came out from the ball club on Friday about an East Bank development yep. and Nissan Stadium renovations in kind of just a pitch speech. How do you explain what the announcement was? What we announced last week is that we have entered into formal conversations with the Metro government to really develop a framework financially and then from a planning perspective to develop the land around Nissan Stadium in a way that will bring a mixed use development to the East Bank, but also create a tax structure that will then help us renovate the stadium. Very exciting. Let's start with the renovations on the stadium. Absolutely. What sorts of renovations are you anticipating even in the preliminary phases? Sure, there's a lot TBD. We're doing focus groups, we're doing surveys to help us decide exactly what this needs to look like. But the overarching strategy and philosophy, Mike, is that we want to create more amenities and more upgrades to the fan experience throughout the whole building. So whether you are a, just a, you know, an average Joe or Jill that like has upper level seats, we want to figure out how can we enhance that experience to create a more vibrant and fun and dynamic experience all the way to the Uber premium. So the high end experiences, what other amenities do we need to add to the building in order to make that happen? A couple of questions fans have asked me I want to throw at you. Absolutely. Why not just build a new stadium? 
the easy answer to that is we don't need one. You know, Nissan Stadium is dated for sure, but it's got great bones and it's a great facility. It just needs an upgrade. Why don't we put a dome on the stadium? Well, it goes back to Bud Adams and Amy Adams Strunk's vision for the team. Bud and Amy, they always felt that we're an open air team and that that's really what reflects Nashville and who we are. And so we're staying true to that. And then also we're looking to build this as part of a neighborhood and we want it to fit in. And you know, those big dome structures, they don't really read neighborhood. Those are usually more standalone facilities out in the middle of nowhere, things of that nature. We want this to be more endemic to Nashville. So that to us meant more of an upgrade and a more of a renovation of what we currently have. What is the basic timeline for the renovations to Nissan Stadium? We hope that within three to five years that we're sitting in a fully renovated stadium. Do you expect while the renovations go on, there will be maybe some parking changes? If you've ever renovated your house, you know it's messy, right? Yes. So at the end of the day, you know, the renovation is likely going to displace certain things at certain times, but ultimately we hope to have solutions for parking and everything else. Will it affect seating capacity in Nissan Stadium in terms of what the renovation will bring? It probably will, but it's hard to tell where it'll net out. So in one area, like we're looking at different ways to install different amenities in the upper level. So you might end up killing seats up there as you create bars or new restaurants up there. But then we're also looking at areas that we might extend and create new space and new clubs and things like that. So net net, we expect to be roughly in a similar capacity that we are now, but it'll likely change in one direction or another a little bit. Talked extensively about being part of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. adding something. And so that's community. Right. And that's and that's not just Titans fans all over the place. That's people who live in the area. Yep. Community involvement and community input is very important, particularly, I would think, in 2021, right? Absolutely. I mean, you mentioned the Titans fans and families. So we have already started engaging season ticket members and fans in terms of their opinions about what the building should look like and the types of features that we need to be thinking about. But equally importantly, to your point, are our neighbors, the adjoining neighborhoods here in the East Bank. You know, how do we bring this development to life and what needs to be included in a way that's additive to their lives and to their communities and certainly not distracting or destructive. And those season ticket members who were involved and others mm -hmm. have probably seen some renderings, which are <laughs> are very, very early, but sort of give people just a basic idea of what it could look like. Absolutely. And again, because we were doing survey work, we knew that a lot of people might, you know, screen grab or whatever and push them out. So we actually shared some of the pictures ourselves. And so what you'll see is a range of things, including a new imagining of the South End Zone, which will become more of a concert venue with concessions and a place to hang out before, during and after the game. We released a picture of a field club, which is a really high end concept that would be built underneath the, the stands and a new area where the players would actually walk out through the club. I've mentioned the idea of creating new bar spaces and new club spaces in the upper levels. We've, we've released a picture of that. And so again, the intent was to show a range of concepts that would address all the different areas of the building to kind of show the upside for fans, no matter where you happen to sit. So the announcement came out on Friday, but you've been with the ball club for nearly two years. Mm -hmm. And you and Burke Nihill yep. and several staff members have been working on it for almost that long, right? Mike, I've been sitting on these pictures for the better part of a year now. So it's super exciting to be able to share with people, to be able to stand here and talk to you now about some real ideas and to put a real timeline to it. It's super exciting. It's going to be great for our fans. It's going to be great for our partners. And it's going to be great for the team. And great for Nashville as well. Absolutely. Good stuff. That's Thank Gil you. Beverly, Titan Senior Vice President. Chief Marketing and Revenue Officer joining us on the Mike Vrabel Show. When we come back, Mike Vrabel's back. It's time for the Nissan Keys to winning at Green Bay Saturday night. Stay tuned. We continue from the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Going to Green Bay, Sunday night football, time for our Nissan Keys to success. Mike Vrabel, you start with special teams. Well, I think it all starts there. We're, we're going to have to be able to create some field position uh, as we go on the road. And the best way to do that is with special teams. we, we got to try to get some returns going. Hopefully we can get Darrington back there again and, and see if we can't block a little better. When we punt it, let's see if we can't pin him down there like we did with, with Nick and Brett the other day. And, and hopefully we can cover some kickoffs. All right, the second key that you have, touchdowns in the red zone on offense. It's about cashing in. It is, you know, and that's something that's been a, it's been a strength for us. And 
and they're really good. And we're also um, proud of what we've done so far this year, but we're going to have to continue that trend and, and make sure that we find ways to score touchdowns and not kick field goals, Mike. And finally, affecting Aaron Rodgers with your defense, how do you do it? Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot of ways. I think the best way is to cover him tight. You know, I mean, Adams is going to be the target, leading target by almost you know, double. The guy gets the ball out of his hand quickly. You know, Carolina was able to rush him. You know, Carolina threw the guards out of the way a couple times and got in the pocket and, and got sacks on him. So, you know, that's something that I hope that we can try to do. Merry Christmas, Michael. Merry Christmas, guys. And Merry Christmas to all of you watching the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. We'll talk to you from Green Bay on Titans Radio Sunday night at 6. Thanks for joining us. Tighten up.